Welcome to MathMaster.org. We're going to have a look at adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators now. That means where the bottom number in the fractions, the denominators, are different. Before we go into this lesson, you need to be totally okay with the idea of what equivalent fractions are and how you find them. Also, you must be good at adding and subtracting fractions when the denominators are the same. So when the bottom number in the fractions are the same. Right, don't ever fall for this trap. Some people, when they're adding fractions, think that you just add the numerators, so in this case 1 add 2 is 3, and then you add the denominators. 4 add 4 is 8. A quarter add 2 quarters is not 3 eighths. That's totally incorrect. If you've seen the video about adding and subtracting fractions where the denominators are the same as they are here, you'll know that you only add or subtract the numerators. The denominators stay the same. So in this case, one quarter add two quarter, we do one add two is three for the numerator, but the denominator stays as a quarter, stays as four. <clears throat> so a quarter plus two quarters is three quarters. Just a quick recap about equivalent fractions. Here I've written that one quarter is equal to three twelfths. They're equivalent fractions. That means they're exactly the same size. They're describing the same number. They're the, describing the same proportion. They're exactly the same size as each other. Remember how we find equivalent fractions? We basically multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. That can be any whole number. In this case, I've chosen 3. So 1 times 3 is 3 for the numerator. 4 times 3 is 12 for the denominator. So 1 quarter is equal to 3 twelfths. If you don't really see how equivalent fractions are the same size as each other, here's a really good way to think about it. Fractions are really just division sums, so a quarter is exactly the same thing as 1 divided by 4, which is 0 0.25. 3 twelfths is exactly the same thing as 3 divided by 12, which if you type that into your calculator you'll find comes out as 0 0.25 as well. So 1 quarter and 3 twelfths are equivalent fractions. They are describing the same size number, which is 0 0.25. OK, what I'm going to do is start with a fraction sum where the denominators are the same. So in this case, 1 quarter add 2 quarters is 3 quarters. What I've done in the top left uh, example here is I've changed that 1 quarter into an equivalent fraction, 2 eighths. Now, 1 quarter and 2 eighths are equivalent fractions. They're describing exactly the same size number. So if 1 quarter add 2 quarters is 3 quarters, 2 eighths add 2 quarters must also equal 3 quarters. They must get the same answer because 1 quarter and 2 eighths are exactly the same size number. They're equivalent fractions. OK, in this top right example, what I've done is I've just used a different equivalent fraction for one quarter. So if one quarter add two quarters is three quarters, I can also say three twelfths add two quarters is three quarters. Because one quarter and three twelfths are exactly the same size, they are equivalent fractions. <clears throat> in this bottom left example, I've just used an equivalent fraction for two quarters. I've changed that into one half. They're equivalent fractions, so they're the same size. So if one quarter add two quarters is three quarters, one quarter add a half must also be equal to three quarters. To finish off here on the bottom right hand side, I've actually used equivalent fractions for both of them. So I've changed one quarter into two eighths, and I've changed two quarters into its equivalent fraction six twelfths. If one quarter add two quarters is three quarters, 
Then, because they are equivalent fractions, because they're describing the same size number, 2 eighths and 6 twelfths must also be equal to 3 quarters. The idea that I'm trying to get across here is that the fact that you change the fractions, so long as they are equivalent fractions, it doesn't change the answer. The idea is that equivalent fractions are describing things that are the same size. And so if you change a fraction into a, an equivalent fraction, the answer to the sum doesn't actually change. That's the main idea that I've tried to get across here. OK, quite often, or well, what we've done here, um, we've taken uh, a fraction sum where the denominators are the same, and we've changed one of those fractions using an equivalent fraction to come up with a fraction sum where the denominators are different. So a quarter and a half denominators are four and two, they're different. Quite often, what you end up doing is actually going the other way. You get given a fraction sum where the denominators are different, and you use equivalent fractions to create a fraction sum where the denominators are the same. So in this case, we'd start with the bottom left example, and we'd move to the example above it. We change the one half into two quarters so that we've got a fraction sum where the denominators are the same. That's a really good thing to do because once the denominators are the same, it's really easy to add those two fractions together. So long as you remember that you just add the numerators, that's, that's easy. OK, so let's have a look at how this actually works in real life <clears throat> with a couple of examples. We're going to do one third and three sixths. So what I want to do is rewrite that fraction sum by using equivalent fractions to make the denominators, the bottom numbers, the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that one third into two sixths. One third and two sixths are equivalent fractions. They're the same size as each other. So if the top, uh, so the top fraction sum must be equal to the bottom one. Okay. Now I can just now I've got the denominators the same. They're sixths. I just add the numerators. Two add three is five. Leave the denominator as six. So if two six add three sixths is five sixths, we know that our starting question, one third add three sixths, is five sixths. Why do we know that? Because that one third and two sixths were equivalent fractions. OK, I look at how subtraction one works now. Seven eighths take away two quarters. What I've done here is I'm trying to work towards rewriting the fraction sum where the denominators are the same. So what I've done is I've found an equivalent fraction to two quarters, which is four eighths. And now that I've got that far, I've rewritten the fraction sum, and you can see that the denominators are now the same. I used an equivalent fraction to do that, to change two quarters to four eighths, but now that the denominators are the same, it's really easy to do the sum. We just do the uh, subtract the denominator uh, the numerators, so seven take four is three, and leave the denominator the same. That's three eighths. So seven eighths subtract two quarters is three eighths. Sometimes it's not always easy to spot uh, which equivalent fractions to use to make the denominators the same. It was easy in the last couple of examples <clears throat> because one number, one denominator was a multiple of the other. But in this case, it's not particularly um, easy to see what I should change two thirds into and what I should change one fifth into to make the denominators the same. So I'm going to show you a nice little method that you can use uh, that will help you out with this. So the first thing to do is to take both of those fractions and put them in a little star or a circle, as you can see here. The next step is for each of those equivalent fractions 
uh, sorry, for each of those fractions to draw around it equivalent fractions to itself. So two thirds I've written four sixths, six ninths, eight twelfths, ten fifteenths, and twelve eighteenths. These are all equivalent fractions to two thirds. So I've written them around that fraction. On the right hand side, you can see that I've written equivalent fractions to one fifth. So one fifth is equal to two tenths, three fifteenths, four twentieths, five twenty fifths, and six thirtieths. Okay, so you take the two original fractions and then around them you write equivalent fractions to them. The next thing you do is you have to spot which of the equivalent fractions in each side have the same denominator. So in this case, 10 fifteenths and 3 fifteenths have the same denominator, 15. So you use these two equivalent fractions to rewrite your original sum. So I take the 10 fifteenths and I add to that 3 fifteenths. So just to recap, this has been a little method uh, that we've used to smart which equivalent fractions we use to turn 2 thirds add 1 fifth into 10 fifteenths add 3 fifteenths. Okay, once we've got that far, it's nice and easy. We just add the numerators, 10 add 3 is 13, leave the denominator as it is. So the answer to our original question is 13 fifteenths. So just to conclude what we've learned in this lesson, I'm going to do one more example where I explain the process one more time. If we've got 3 quarters subtract 1 fifth, the first thing that you have to do is use equivalent fractions to rewrite the calculation with fractions that have the same denominator. So in this case, I would use 15 twentieths as an equivalent fraction to 3 quarters. I would use 4 twentieths as an equivalent fraction to a fifth. Why have I done that? Because I want to rewrite the calculation with fractions that have the same denominator. Next up, when you get that far, you either add or subtract, subtract in this case, the, denom uh, the numerators, and then the denominator stays the same. So 15 twentieths minus 4 twentieths. 15 take 4 for the numerator is 11, the denominator stays the same. So the answer to this one would be 11 twentieths. That was adding and subtracting fractions with different denominators. If you want to see some more fantastic math videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.